Welcome to Valentine's Day. Moving on TV star. So how do I talk about Valentine's Day without making it commercial like lots of stations do? And we're here always to look for a new angle, something more exciting, something more diverse, something global. Anyway, the whole atmosphere is here at the moment. As I sit in this beautiful garden and I can hear the birds tweeting away, singing, total freedom, romance, the perfect setting to bring the person that you really, really love and propose to them perhaps. But what if Valentine's Day has got a lot of other implications? What if Valentine's Day is known in lots of other places in the world in a completely different way to the way we know it? That's what I'm here to talk to you about. So not only am I here with the red rose, the symbol of love, l'amour, um, I love you, je t'aime, Anna Bechebek, Ani Oevidotra, lots of languages where we can say I love you with a beautiful red rose. Not only am I here to tell you about the red rose and the history of the red rose, but we're going to be interviewing people and asking them what Valentine's Day means to them. So how about I start with a little bit of my story? <laughs> Not to bore you too much. But 22 years ago, I got up 4 a.m. in the morning on the 14th of February, and there was a card with a monkey on it and a balloon and on the card it said, will you marry me? <laughs> and that's when my husband proposed to me and we've been together, married now for 21 years. But you see, this seems to happen on Valentine's Day. Maybe it's a really good thing that we have this because people who really connect and care about each other, they don't always have the courage to actually get down on, an, on one knee and propose. And also women. Women get a chance to propose to their boyfriends. <laughs> so it's a good thing. It's a good thing because it gives them that extra courage to know, wow, 14th of February, I'm going to propose. I'm going to really commit to that one person for the rest of my life. What a huge thing. What a huge thing to do. But anyway, let me tell you a little bit more about Valentine's Day, but let me tell you about it from the global point of view, because here I'm moving on TV, we're looking for different angles. I'm excited to not talk about the chocolates and the roses and the romance and the films and the commercialism and the perfumes and the naughty underwear. I'm excited to talk about what Valentine's Day means to lots of other people. And you don't have to be in a relationship, or a romantic relationship. I've been looking on the internet and reading quite a lot about Valentine's Day. And one of the things that really struck me was that it actually comes from pe pagan traditions, as we know, everything usually does, but it's called the holiday of love. And love, to me, is not just the love of a man or a woman or, or a man and a man or whatever. It, that's not what it means. Love is an unconditional thing. To me, it's universal. And you know, in Finland, they actually do follow that up. And Valentine's Day to them is the love of a friend to another friend. So they send a card to their friends to tell them they love them. Isn't that beautiful? In Norfolk, there used to be a character called Jack. And he used to go to the back doors and if there were children living there, he would leave sweets. Now, that sounds a little bit strange in our day and age, you know, if you think of the implications, but it was just a gesture and they called him mystical Jack. And then you get China. China calls it the holiday of lovers or the day for lovers. So it's very similar to the Western world where we have latched onto it where it's to do with lovers rather than just friendships. We all come from different parts of the world with our own ideas and our own cultures and bring them together here on Moving On TV, which is beautiful. 
we bring our cultures, we bring our religions, we bring our ideas together. It's so exciting. What is the significance of the rose then? The red rose. And in every, every culture and language we know, and particularly in France, as you know from the Piaf shows and everything, the red rose symbolizes love, romantic love, and also connection to people and the love of people. Now apparently, if you give one rose, your intentions are romantic. If you give 25 roses, it's to say thank you. And if you land with 50 roses on your doorstep on the 14th of February, it means that you're getting global love. <laughs> People are saying to you, I love you, no matter who you are and what you are. My brother, my sister, my friend, my mother, my aunt, my uncle, it, my pet. 50 roses is a global love thing. Has anybody ever been given 50 roses all in one go? I've seen it in the films. When you walk into a room and this person wants to show their, their, um, their devotion and the whole room is covered in roses. And what about those little petals that they strewn all over the place and you've got to follow them to the bedroom. So we're back to romantic love again. But isn't that interesting? Now, the red rose actually originated from the goddesses, believe it or not. Aphrodite, the Greek goddess of love, and Venus, the Roman goddess of love. That's where the red rose comes from originally, apparently. And we use it, as I say, in different ways. So when you get to the 14th of February, are you going to do something different this year? How about ringing up your friends or sending them a text and saying, hey, I really care about you. Thank you for being in my life. I know it sounds kind of cheesy and corny and not cool, but wouldn't that make their day so much happier if you just said to them, I really, really want to say thank you for you being in my life. That's it. Nothing else. I don't expect anything back. That person's day will change for the better. What other incredible things can you do on Valentine's Day then? If you take away the implication of romantic love and you're not in a relationship, bring your mom, your dad, your uncle, anyone and just say, I love you. And that all that means is I'm so glad you're in my life. So we can all become part of Valentine's Day then. You don't need to be just in a relationship or falling in love. That's how you can celebrate it. Think about it. If you take away the commercialism like we do with Christmas and all the other holidays and festivals, it becomes something so deep in our hearts. And that's what we want to show you on Moving On TV. That's what we want to show you. We're not interested if you can't afford a box of chocolates or a rose. We're interested in what's in your heart. And we're interested in that coming across to everyone in the world. And that's how I'm going to be celebrating the 14th of February, apart from buying an anonymous card and putting it through the door for my husband, because that way he thinks he's got secret admirer. <laughs> and it gets quite funny. But apart from that, have a beautiful Valentine's Day this year. And just think about what we've been, I've been saying here. So that's it really. That's the conclusion I've come to. Tell people you care about them and love them and cherish them all through the year. Don't wait for the 14th of February. And for God's sake, women, if you want to propose to your man, just do it. And don't wait for that one day to do it. And the same with you guys, just get on with it. Because once you find that special person to share your life with, you will never look back. So take care and spread the love.